you should know how to convert it to decimal notation. Now let's look at a couple more examples. 1 and 62 hundredths times 10 to the 8th. A positive exponent of 8 tells me to move my decimal 6 places to the right. If I move it 2 places, I'll be behind the 2. So in order to move it the 8 places, I need to put down 6 zeros. So it would be 1, 6, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. And the decimal would go there when I convert it to decimal notation. Notice I've moved my decimal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places to the left. So look at 3.981 times 10 to the negative 6. Now since we have a negative exponent, I need to move my decimal to the left. Moving it to the left one place would put it behind the 3, so I need 5 more zeros. So I need 0 0.12345 3981. So notice we had 3.981 times 10 to the negative 6. I need to move my decimal 6 places to the left. The decimal is here. I moved it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places to the left. I converted from scientific notation to decimal notation. Again, if your calculator or the computer gives you an answer, in scientific notation, you should know what it means and be able to convert it to decimal notation if needed. Let's note one more thing about these two problems. When I have a positive exponent, that tends to give me an extremely large number. A positive exponent of 8 gave me a large number when I converted it to decimal notation. Whereas Negative exponents seem to give small numbers. So the negative exponent 6, exponent negative 6, gave an extremely small number. I like where you keep that in mind as we make conversions so you can always check to see if it seems reasonable. Now let's consider some examples in which we convert to scientific notation. Whereas we're going to move from decimal notation to scientific notation. We'll simply reverse the process that we use to convert from scientific notation to decimals. Let's use the idea before also that positive exponents gave large numbers, whereas negative exponents gave small numbers when converted to decimals. So if we have a large number, when we convert it to scientific notation, we should have a positive exponent. A small number converted to scientific notation should give us a negative exponent. Now you might ask, what do you mean by large and small? Well, large is going to be anything over 1. Small is going to be anything whose absolute value is under 1. So with large, we're talking about absolute values being over 1. Small, absolute values being less than 1. Okay, let's look at the first one. Let's go back to the 280,000 that we had earlier. Let's convert 280,000 to scientific notation. 280,000 is a large number. So therefore the exponent is going to be positive. We know the decimal needs to be between the 2 and the 8. The decimal needs to be between the 2 and the 8 because that's the definition of scientific notation. We need to have one, one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal. We also have times 10 raised to some power. Now since 280,000 is a large number, we know it's going to be a positive exponent. The question is, what is the exponent? Well, the exponent is going to be the number of places that you have to move the decimal. Decimal is understood to be here, so I have to move it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five places to get it back to this position. So it would be 2.8 times 10 to the fifth. Now some of you might be saying, whoa, before you said if you move the decimal place to the right, you have a positive exponent that says move it to the right, but you moved it to the left. But remember, we're reversing the process. A while ago, we were going from, sign, from scientific notation to decimal notation. Now, going from scientific notation to decimal, then a positive exponent says move it to the right. But now we're going from decimal to scientific, so we're going in the opposite direction. But rather than remembering that, you'd be better off to remember that large numbers will give you positive exponents and simply count the number of spaces and not try to get too involved with the other part. Let's look at another example. 0 0.000124. Well, this is a small number. Its absolute value is less than 1. Small numbers have negative exponents. So it's going to be 1.24 times 10 raised to some negative power. So it'd be 1.24 times 10 to some negative power. Now the question is, how many places I had to shift the exponent? I had to move it 1, 2, 3, 4. So the exponent will be negative 4. Thirty-six. The decimal is understood to be here. I need to have 3.6. Be 3.6 times. Now 36 is a large number because the absolute value is more than 1. So it be 3.6 times 10. And I had to move my decimal one place to get it from behind the 6 to between the 3 and the 6. So the exponent would be a positive 1. Large number told me positive, moving it one place. 200 is a small number. It's less than 1. That means my exponent would be negative. So it would be 2 times 10 to some negative power. Now in order to get from 200 to 2, I had to shift my decimal two places. So the exponent would be... Two. Let's look at a hybrid. This one is not in scientific notation because I have two decimal, two digits to the left of the decimal. But it's not in pure decimal either. Now what you might want to do with this one is to convert it to decimal first and then convert it back to scientific. Now, I convert it to pure decimal. This tells me to move my decimal five places to the right. So it would be 2, 8, 7, 0, 0, 0. C was here, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, one, need one more. So I move my decimal five places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I'm going to convert it back to scientific notation. I need the decimal between 8 and 7, so it'll be 2.87 times 10. And how far do I have to move it to get it back to here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So pure scientific notation would be 2.87 times 10 to the 6th. Let's analyze that a little bit more. In scientific notation, we have two parts, the 28.7 and the 10 to the fifth. Now this is not true scientific notation, but we still have the two parts. Now to get it in true scientific notation, I needed to divide the 28.7 by 10. You see, dividing by 10 moves my decimal one place to the left. Now if I divide the 28.7 by 10, in order to keep the problem equal, I would need to multiply 10 to the 5th by 10. 10 to the 5th by 10 is 10 to the 6th. 
So think about it. If you move it over five places, then in order to get it here, you have to move it back six. So the exponent would have to be six.